In this video, I'll show you how you can create your own drag and drop question with partially correct feedback using advanced actions. Okay, let's get started here. So, got a question from Luke. Luke asks, is there a way to make a partial correct answer option? Uh, he has a drag and drop with four options and two correct answers. Uh, he needs it so if the user gets one answer correct, they get a separate partial correct feedback message. Uh, keep up the great work. Well, Luke, uh, I can tell you that there's a way to do this. It's a little bit more complicated than just a default drag and drop, but I'll walk you through it, and hopefully this solves your problem here. So I've got a couple of slides here set up, an introductory slide where we're teaching our users the basics in this particular case about blue stars and green circles. And in this interaction, we're asking them to identify the blue star by dragging it over to this box over here and identify the green circle by dragging it over to this box over here. Now, what I've done is um, I've set up all the material that I need or all the items that I need on this particular page. So I have all my draggable objects over here. I have those two drop boxes, and I've actually created my own captions. These are simply uh, shape objects that I've set up to be an incorrect caption, a correct caption, and two different partially correct captions. So in this first one, this assumes that the user was able to identify one of the correct answers, but not the other and vice versa with this one down here. Now you'll notice that I already have a submit button, but I haven't created my drag and drop yet. And I also have a back and a next button. Now the submit button is simply going to run an advanced action that I've created called submit DND, which I'll show you in a few moments. And the back and the next buttons are simply that. They take you to the previous slide or to the next slide but the default state for those, or the default um, setting for those is that they're not visible in output. And the same thing goes true for all of my captions as well. They're also set to be not visible in output. In addition, and this is just for testing purposes, I've added um, a shape at the top here that contains the variables that I'm using to keep track of whether we've dragged the correct items over or not. Um, let's take a look at those right now. In fact, if you go into your project drop-down menu and go into variables, you can see those variables that I've created. One's called D&D score and one's called D&D score two. And their default values are simply zero. Let me show you what, uh, what happens next. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to create our drag and drop interaction. And we're going to do that by doing uh, the drag and drop option from the interactions drop down icon. And all we need to do here, very straightforward, we're going to identify what our draggable objects are. Hit next. Identify our drop targets. Hit next. And now we need to identify the correct answers by mapping them over to the drop targets here. So. Our green circle is going to go here, and our blue star is going to go over here, and that's pretty much it. Now you'll notice that it's created another submit button. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, drag that over into the scrap area, and it's also set up some additional captions. These are the default captions that Adobe Captivate creates when you do a drag and drop. We're going to get rid of those as well, but first we're going to hit finish here return ourselves to the normal edit menu or edit screen of Adobe Captivate. So like I said, we're going to move that submit button over here and we're going to go to the actions uh, tab of the drag and drop properties inspector and we're going to make some initial changes. So the first thing we need is uh, no action on success and no action on failure because in fact we're going to give that control to the users by showing or hiding the appropriate next or back button. Also, uh, we can have a, uh, a reset button on this page if you wish. I don't think it's absolutely required, but you know some people prefer that. 
So we're going to add that as well. So we pretty much have everything we need here. We want to get rid of these uh, failure and success captions because we're not going to need those. Let's take a look at a couple of other things here on the options tab. I do want to give the users the ability to redrag an object if they've already dropped it on the drop target. Uh, so all I need to do is check off that there. If we go to the, uh, the format tab and select one of our drop targets, uh, we can do a few things here. Uh, the first thing I want to do, in fact, I'm going to select both drop targets and I'm going to change the snap behavior slightly. Just because I've got these titles across the top, I don't want the objects to cover those titles, so we're going to have them align with the bottom of the drop target, and that should work fine. So let's, um, let's actually select our first drop target, and what we need to do is we need to assign a value of 1 to our drag and drop score variable if and only if someone drags the blue star over. Everything else will assign a value of zero to that particular variable. So let's set up how you do that. Click on the Object Actions button from the Format tab, and you'll see all the accepted drag sources here. Now, we don't want to have an unlimited amount of drag sources, so we're going to uncheck Accept All. We're going to leave the count at one. In other words, we only want to allow one object to be placed on the blue star box. But we're going to change the on accept action to be replace rather than go back because we want, if we're dragging a new object over, we want to replace whatever object might already be there. Now what we need to do is we need to set an action for all of the various different types of drag source types that might get dragged over. Uh, as you can see, I've labeled these, uh, at least the correct ones, with a label so they're easy to identify. So on this one here, the only one we want to um, add to our variable is with the uh, blue star. So we're going to change the action for that to assign, and that's our uh, variable there, D and D score, with a value of 1. And we're going to uncheck continue playing the project because we're going to stay on this until the user hits submit. So we'll click on OK. And I'm just going to do something similar to all the rest of them here. We're going to also assign, but in this case it will be a value of zero, and uncheck continue playing project. So I'm just going to, as quickly as possible, do that for the remaining items here. And even the green circle is one that we want to assign a value of zero. Because essentially we're saying all of the other ones are wrong answers, but the blue star is the right answer. So we've got that set up. Let's do the same thing for the green circle. So we select that drop target. We hit Object Actions. And we're going to make those same settings up above. We'll allow one item to be dragged into there. And we're going to choose Replace to be the default action type or the default um, uh, drag to action, I guess is the right word. And we're going to change this one here. Now we're, we've got the second variable to work with now. So we're going to assign, not D&D score, but D&D score 2. And we're going to make this one a value of 1 because this is the correct circle, green circle there. And the rest will be a value of 0. So we'll just assign those as quickly as we can here. Make sure you uncheck Continue Playing Project, otherwise it will proceed from that point. We want it to stay on this, uh, this interaction here. So make that zero and uncheck Continue Playing Project. Uh, assign zero. Two more to go. Assign zero. And last one. Okay, so now everything's all set up. 
Now, unlike the submit button, which would normally submit uh, this question for regular review, what we're going to do is we're going to execute uh, advanced actions off of our own submit button here and if you go over to the um, the actions um, item here under the properties inspector you'll see we have submit D&D &D, and this is an advanced action I've created uh, but but first let, let me before we go into that let me talk about the slide enter uh, situation so I've created a reset drag and drop uh, advanced action. Let's take a look at that as well. Advanced uh, actions allow me to run more than one action and all I've done here is I've put all of the buttons that I've got hidden back to hidden. All of my captions are back to hidden so correct, wrong, partial one, partial two and I'm also resetting the drag and drop score and drag and drop score two back to zero. So if I've attempted this already and I return to this slide, it'll be like starting over again. So that's all set up. But when I hit the submit button, I want to check for a few things. And let me show you how this works. So here I've got my advanced action called submit underscore D and D. And basically we're, we're doing, um, we're, we're actually creating four different decisions. And these are if action decisions. So the first if action decision is we're checking to see if it's 100% correct. So again, our two variables, D and D score and D and D score two, if they're both equal to one, in other words, I've dragged the green circle and the blue um, star, then I wanna show the correct message, hide the wrong message, hide both of the partial messages, and then show the next button, allowing the user to proceed and hiding the back button, which I guess is optional. You could have them go back if they wish, but it's not necessary in this case. Now, along with that, I have a partial one decision, very similar. The, the format's basically the same, except I'm saying if the drag and drop score is equal to zero, in other words, um, the blue star was not put in the right spot, However, the D and D score two is equal to one, which means the green circle was placed in the correct spot. So I'm half right. I'm going to show partial message two. Partial message one is hidden. The wrong and the correct answers will be hidden. And I'm going to show the back button and hide the next button, preventing the user from moving forward. Similarly, I've got partial two, which does really exactly the same thing but if the opposite were true, like if I was to successfully drag the blue star, but maybe I put the purple circle in the place of the green circle. So what happens then is I show partial message one, I hide the other partial message, the correct and the wrong captions. And then of course I show my back button, allowing the user to review what they should have learned before. And then I'm hiding the next button. The final decision is the wrong decision. So if both of these variables are zero, in other words, I have not selected any of the right answers, I'm going to show the wrong message, hide the correct and the two partial messages, show the back button, and then hide the next button. So we have basically all the possibilities built into our advanced action. Let's close this here. And I think we're pretty much set up to go. So uh, why don't we try testing this out right now? So I'll preview this project. So here's our introductory slide. Remember that it's important that you can only use blue stars and green circles. That's what we're teaching our learners today. Let's hit next. So now it's time for us to test this out. Now remember, this item up here is just going to reveal what the value of the variable is. And in the final version of this, I would probably delete that box. So let's try dragging a blue circle into the blue star box. It remains zero up here, so that's correct. And we'll put a purple circle down here. Okay, we haven't gotten anything right. Let's hit submit. So it's telling me that it's incorrect. We were unable to identify any of the correct answers. 
click the back button to review this material again. So I have two choices here. I can reset the slide and try again where it will return my, my circles back, or I can hit back if I wish to review the material once again. So let's do that. All right, that's what the blue star looks like. That's what the green circle looks like. Let's see if we can do that, do a little bit better this time. Hit next. Uh, every time you enter into your drag and drop, it will reset the interaction. Plus, I also added that reset D&D &D advanced action, which hides my next and back buttons and hides all my captions as well, and resets the variables back to zero. So let's try getting this partially correct and see if we get the right message. So I'm going to put the blue star in. Uh, you'll notice that the variable, the first variable was uh, assigned a one. So I've done that correctly. But let's um, let's put a green circle or green star in here and hit submit and see what I get. Oh, partially correct. You're able to identify the blue star, but not the green circle. Click the back button to review this material again. So I can again go back. Yes. OK, it should be that. Go, go forward again and let's try it once more. This time we'll get it right. I'm sure of it. So we'll put our blue star up here and our green circle over here. You can see uh, my little test box up here shows that I've got both answers correct because I've assigned both variables a value of one. If I hit submit, I should get the correct message. And I do, I correctly identified the blue star and the green circle. Click next to proceed. So. Let's do that and we get one final slide on this interaction to, to let us know that we've done a great job and clearly we understand the concepts of blue stars and green circles. So hopefully that gives you a new type of interaction that you can include for your users. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.